three months. I'm Dr. Abhishek Nawal. I graduated from Andhra Medical College, Sarvapur. I did my schooling from SKVM Vaisal. I have secured NEET All India Rank 224 with AP State Rank 12 this year. I also got AIMS Rank 152 and PGA Rank 112 in this November session. My NEET Rank during my internship, that is NEET 2019, was 10,009. So, here I am before you to discuss some of the plans and strategies which work for me. The study plan and the strategy is very important to the PG preparation. So, let me share three ideas which work for me well during my preparation time. This is a common question which comes to us during our preparation when we start our preparation. When to start our preparation? Remember, my friends, if you are preparing for your theory exam, you already started your preparation. Many of the important questions in our university exams are also important for the PG preparation. Even if you want or not, your PG preparation starts from your first year itself. The most important thing to do during PG preparation is to have faith in your, yourself, is to believe in yourself. I'm a mediocre student. There are many students in my class who study better than me. There are many students who are preparing along with me. There are many students who started early. There are many sources available in the market. There are many students who are scoring better than me. Believe me, my friends, I, I had all these doubts in my mind while starting my preparation. But believe me, once you start studying, following your timetable, confidence sets in and things start going your way. First, start doing what's necessary, then do what's possible. Suddenly, you are doing the impossible. You can do anything, just start doing it. Just plan things accordingly. A fool with a plan is better off than a genius without a plan. So, if you plan every hour in a day, every day in a week, every week in a month, and every month in your nine months' time, you are already better than many of your peers. The greatest strength that we as students have in this time is our enthusiasm, our eagerness to learn new things. This emotion is all that we need to go on an extra mile. A great start is half the race won. Remember friends, enthusiasm changes everything. So, I am sharing three strategies which work for me during my PG preparation time. The first thing is the value of repeated revision. Remember that how much ever we read, the only thing that matters in the end is how much we retain and how much we apply that in the exam. Keep two to three hours every day to revise a few topics that you have read before. 30 minutes to revise what you did last day. One hour to revise what you did last week. One to two hours for what you did last month. For example, suppose you read anatomy last month and now you sit down to need to revise that subject. Mind you, friend, you surely won't be able to revise the whole anatomy or the whole upper limb in those 60 minutes. But revise whatever you can in those 60 minutes and you will remember them better. Our brain tends to remember incomplete and unfinished tasks much better than completed tasks. This is known as the Zygornik effect. So, if you can't read upper limb in 60 minutes, at least read arm and forearm in that time. Similarly, break down your entire syllabus, entire subjects into tiny bits and pieces and you tend to remember them better than the whole subject. What is an MCQ? What is the art of solving MCQs? It is the second and the most important thing during PG preparation. An MCQ is nothing but an objective representation of the patient situation put before you. It's the only pattern in the world where the answer is already in front of us, but the examiner just confuses us by putting three more choices. We just need to pick the right answer. Let us see what is the art of solving MCQs. Every time, every time you see a tough question, do not retract. Break down the question 
the tiny words and try to understand the question. Train your mind to make educated guesses. Toppers tend to guess better than others. Yes, it is the art of solving MCQs. It's the art of guessing. If you don't know the answer to a question, read it slowly and patiently with the options. Read it carefully and try to rule out two options which are unlikely to be the answer. You'll be surprised to know that in most of the questions, this can be done easily even if you read the options carefully. If you make a blind guess now after ruling out two options, you have 50% chance of getting the question right. So, you need to attempt that question. The art of guessing improves greatly with practice. As much as you read, MCQ solving is equally important. So, reading theory and MCQ solving should go hand in hand during preparation. Let us see two sample questions to understand the art of solving MCQs. This is a recent exam question. A 30 year old female patient came with a chief complaint of bulging eyes and diplopia. On examination, it was bilateral proptosis and chemosis. Her thyroid levels were normal. What can be the possible diagnosis? Option A, thyroid ophthalmopathy. Option B, cavernous sinus thrombosis. Option C, orbital pseudotumor. Option D, orbital cellulitis. Remember friends, whenever you come across a clear scenario or a long question or a clinical scenario, you need to identify the key words. You need to note them down in your mind. A 30 year old female patient came with the chief complaint of bulging eyes and diplopia. An examination, there was bilateral proptosis and chemosis. 30 year old female with bilateral proptosis. Most common cause of proptosis in adults, bilateral proptosis in adults is thyroid ophthalmopathy, and that is our the answer here. But her thyroid levels were normal. That is the honey trap in this question. Remember, friends. Patients with thyroid ophthalmopathy can be hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, or euthyroid. So, bilateral proptosis in adults, Graves' disease, most common cause thyroid ophthalmopathy. Let us see the causes of proptosis. The most common cause of proptosis in adults, whether it is unilateral or bilateral, it is thyroid eye disease. In children, the most common cause of unilateral proptosis is orbital cellulitis. The most common cause of bilateral proptosis in children is metastasis from neuroblastoma, more common than acute lymphoid leukemia. So, bilateral proptosis in adults, the first thing to strike in your mind is thyroid ophthalmopathy. So, even before reading the answers or the options, we can directly put the answer as thyroid ophthalmopathy. Let us see what are the other options. Cavernous sinus thrombosis. Cavernous sinus thrombosis presents acutely in an emergency setting with headache and fever. It is associated with marked chemosis, unilateral proptosis, and focal cranial nerve abnormalities. Again, another question. The first cranial nerve to be palsy is six nerve pals. Yes, cavernous sinus thrombosis can lead to bilateral proptosis, but it occurs only in the later stages. Orbital pseudotumor is a rare tumor of the eye. It presents with unilateral proptosis and pain. So, it can be easily ruled out. Both cavernous sinus thrombosis and orbital pseudotumor presents with unilateral proptosis. Remember my friends, if you make a rare diagnosis, you can rarely be correct. This is a popular saying in medicine and it goes through with this question as well. Thyroid is very common in India and it is the first thing that should strike our mind by seeing a 20 year old female with bilateral proptosis. And this rare diagnosis should be ruled out only after we get the common diagnosis correct. Sample question 2. A 10 year old patient presents with a mediastinal mass. Which IHC marker will be useful to distinguish between acute lymphoid leukemia, ALL, and thymo? Option A, CD3. Option B, CD1A. Option C, TDT. Option D, cytokeratin. We have already marked up the markers of T cells and B cells. We already know that the T cell markers are CD3, CD1A, and TDT. The odd one out is cytokeratin. Obviously, that is the answer here. But that is not the logic behind the answer. CD3, CD1A, and the TDT are the markers of T cells. 
both T A L L and thymoma will have T cells. So they are positive for all three of them. But cytokeratin is positive only in thymoma because it has interconnecting epithelial processes which makes the Hessel's corpuscles. So cytokeratin will be positive in thymoma and negative in T A L L. Also, friends, we know that epithelial tumors are cytokeratin positive and mesenchymal tumors are pigmented and testin positive. But we need not know all these options or all these explanations to get the answer right. We know that cytokeratin was the odd one out and we marked it right. The third and the most important thing during preparation is to take regular breaks and to reward yourself frequently. Allow yourself to take short breaks because it is a long journey and it's a journey that matters and not the destination. So take your eyes off the prize and enjoy the journey because it's the journey that truly builds our character and strengthens our soul. Success is a journey and not a destination. The doing is more, more important than the outcome. If I can do it, you can, you can do it too, my friends. Thank you. Stay tuned for more updates.